Abuja, Nigeria. I am Kediti of Luma Twin. I mean, today on the program we shall be taking a look at um, Agric Revolution and its effect. Uh, of course, we know what went down when we talk about the um, Agric Revolution. But quickly, before we introduce our guest or go into the program proper, we shall take a quick uh, reminder on what um, Agricultural Revolution was back then. Stay tuned. The agricultural revolution of the 18th century paved the way for the industrial revolution in Britain. New farming techniques and improved livestock breeding led to amplified food production. These allowed a spike in population and witnessed an improvement in the health of the people. New farming techniques also led to enclosure movement. However, However, the agricultural revolution in Africa and Nigeria in particular has impacted the environment, transforming forests and previously undisturbed land into farmland, destroyed habitats, decreased biodiversity and released carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The agricultural revolution has a variety of consequences for humans, which has been linked to everything from societal inequality a result of humans' increased dependence on the land and fears of scarcity to a decline in nutrition and a rise in infectious diseases contracted from domesticated animals. Data reveals that out of agriculture, cities and civilization grew and because crops and trees and animals could now be farmed to meet demand, the global population rocketed from some 5 million people 10,000 years ago to 8 billion today. One of the greatest impacts of the first agricultural revolution was the ability of large numbers of people to live in one place alongside one another. On a farm, people need to work together to produce food for everyone. Large-scale agriculture has been identified to contribute to a number of issues that cause environmental degradation, including climate change, deforestation, biodiversity loss, dead zones, genetic engineering, Irrigation problems, pollutants, soil degradation, and waste. Welcome back. Like I said earlier, our topic is agric revolution and its effects. And to discuss this with us today is no other person than economist and, of course, the farmer himself. His name is uh, Mr. Gabriel Dakulo. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, we know that um, um, agric revolution gave um, uh, should I say Europe or Britain are uh, the most productive agriculture in Europe? Uh, looking at the whole uh, uh, shenanigans, everything that happened during the revolution, of what effect are these to Nigeria? Yes, looking at the uh, agricultural revolution in comparison with uh, Europe and America, you will know that uh, we have not reached there yet in Nigeria and also in Africa. And when we are talking of revolution, revolution means something that is very drastic, that is supposed to bring a notable change, that is supposed to bring a marked difference from the way it has been done before. Um, the agric revolution in those countries in Europe and America evolved over time in the 1800s to the 1900s and uh, moving towards the 1990s because of uh, uh, changes that were being implemented to improve uh, the agricultural yield, to improve on the policy, to improve on the marketing of agriculture, and also to improve on the trade. And that is why when you are looking at agricultural uh, revolution, you cannot remove the trading aspect of agri from it. Because when you are talking of revolution, yes, it's good enough to have enough yield, enough production, enough harvest, but it is also very important in the marketing side of it, that is the trading as regards agriculture. There are some economists today in the world, especially in Europe, that agriculture is one of their mainstays when it comes to uh, their GDP. One of it is uh, Ukraine, for example, that is one of the highest producers of grain and other agricultural products around the world. And they have been able to evolve because of international trade that involves agriculture and when they have started receiving benefit of those trades they improved also on their agricultural input their agricultural technology and that brings me to where we are in uh, africa and nigeria 
uh, 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 in particular, you will discover that Nigeria started agriculture in a subsistence manner and uh, using man-made uh, hand and uh, human uh, implement. But uh, over time, it has evolved to uh, uh, improve the farm implements and materials, which Nigeria also has subscribed to. But in as much as Nigeria is improving in the area of the, uh, the growing and the uh, and management of the farm and uh, the, the harvest and the yield, we have not improved as well in the trade and marketing. And that is where the challenge is. Because those countries that have successfully achieved agricultural revolution improved on both sides. That is, the agricultural management itself and also the trading aspect. So Nigeria needs to also improve in the trading of agriculture. When I say trading, I mean having our products, living, um, li reaching the, uh, the, all the areas that it needs to reach across the country, moving out to Africa and also uh, internationally. So that area is very critical. And uh, with the new uh, government policy on agri-revolution, yes, we are going to have improved yield, we are going to have uh, improved uh, products, but we also know that if we reach self-sufficiency, we still need to enjoy the benefit of international trade as regards agriculture, which we have not really taken uh, uh, advantage of presently. Okay, um, looking at you, you um, I was going to you know, uh, tell you to mention uh, a little about the benefits the revolution would have for him both locally and of course internationally, yes. looking at what um, other countries are enjoying uh, so far. But um, you've mentioned one or two, can you elaborate more on that? Yes, um, when we are talking of agricultural revolution, it's an international diplomacy tool as well. When you are looking at countries that have products, agricultural products that they supply the world, they also use it as international diplomacy in the sense that if just like uh, Russia and Ukraine are now presently doing, trying to win African countries to their side, you see Russia trying to say, I'm going to supply grains free of charge to some African countries. Ukraine is saying, we are going to make sure that we get our grains down to you uh, despite the war. That is a means of international diplomacy and uh, uh, winning favor to your side or having a voice in the international, uh, international space. The second aspect that is also very important when we are talking of trade, you know trade is a balance of uh, business between countries and uh, when you have products to give out, if what you are giving out as product or trade is more than what you are receiving, then you have a very good balance of trade and you don't have deficit. Nigeria is supposed to enjoy this benefit of good balance of trade, but we have not been able to export as much as possible. Which agricultural produce will have been one of the major exports that will give us a very good balance of trade. So agricultural products, especially for countries that have good uh, yields and crops that they can export, helps to improve the balance of trade of such countries. The third aspect of it is that Yes, we have been talking of uh, food, uh, uh, food sufficiency. Nigeria needs food sufficiency presently now because our population is growing tremendously. And as our population is growing, we need uh, the, the population to be fed because we cannot afford to, to have a hungry population. It will lead to an hungry uh, mob. The other aspect that also is very important is the economic of, economies of scale when it comes to agriculture. When we are talking of agricultural revolution, that means what we are doing presently, we want to do more. That is the farms that we have now, we want to improve on it. The tools that we have now, we want to add more. Our market and our openings that we are presently want to increase. What does that do for us? What it does is that it helps more hands to come into the business. So when Nigeria is crying of unemployment, youth unemployment of 30-something percent, uh, overall unemployment of over 40 percent, Agricultural revolution can take over 50% of that. So when you look at what agricultural revolution can do, it can do a lot for an economy. It can do a lot for Nigeria as it's doing for other countries. When you look at countries like France, for example, you will see about 45% of their citizens, both the young and the old one, they are involved in agriculture. So when they go on strike, for example, you see that a larger number of farmers go on strike and it affects the economy. Why are they going on strike? Because they want to implement and push better policies 
of their crops, of their products, so that the government will be able to support them adequately. That is what agricultural revolution can do for Nigeria. When we have more people in the farms, they have a voice, they have a say, they, they form a block, just like the NLC and the TUC have formed a block now that they must be listened to. That is what agriculture can do. It will help to push good policies that will improve the economy of a country, reduce unemployment because we have more people that will be employed, increase the balance of trade of Nigeria, improve our GDP, and also ensure that we have full sustainability. These are things that agricultural revolution can do for us if we actually implement it like other crimes. If you look at it uh, with policies on ground, you, tell, you um, agree with me that, um, of course, revolution may have not come in its um, revolution, revolution. Yes. We're, we're seeing uh, improved savings, we're seeing policies from government, uh, we're seeing uh, stakeholders uh, you know, holding themselves together to see that some of these abnormalities are being addressed. Yes. Looking at the fact that there's nothing that has a good and not have the bad side, with this revolution, what do we stand to? Um, you know, um, so to say, what do we start? What are the disadvantages? Uh, actually, um, there is there is nothing that is good that does not have uh, is uh, disadvantages. But I I can say that if we look at the benefits, yeah. Nigeria tend to have more benefits yeah. than the disadvantages. But not to mention a few, we still have some few disadvantages. You see, for example, now. Nigeria is all out about agri-revolution. One of the disadvantages of agri-revolution is exploitation. Exploitation is in the, in the sense that the local populace will be exploited and even foreign investors can even exploit the government in the, in the name of agri-revolution. For example, when investors come and they share interest, they make assumptions, they make projections to government and at the end of the day, government will concur, just like we have seen uh, 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 cattle from uh, uh, cattle, uh, cattle rearers or herders from South Africa coming to Quara State, having a good arrangement that benefits them. You understand? It's supposed to be a win-win situation. But when foreign investors come and they see the zeal of the government in ensuring that uh, there is an agri, uh, agri uh, inclusivity and uh, improvement. They tend to give uh, conditions that will benefit them the more. And you will see that at the end of the day, some of those conditions will enhance those investors to have what we call capital flight. In the sense that whatever it is that they are making in Nigeria, producing in Nigeria, they tend to export it. After exporting, they also take the foreign exchange with them because of the eagerness of the government to ensure that we, we increase in our agri space. That is one. The second aspect is exploitation. You know, in, even in other uh, area sectors, you see foreign uh, companies that, if they are not properly monitored, try to exploit the local uh, workers. Yes. And that is one of the things that we also have to look at. Yes, we have a company coming into Nigeria, maybe to grow cassava, for example, or to grow corn that will be uh, improved upon for uh, export. And they want to employ 50,000 Nigerians. Knowing fully well that where they are coming from, there is a standard labor practice. But because they are coming to a, a, a country that is less privileged, they look at all those laws and they use the opportunity of the fact that, yes, they are employing you in mass, you don't have option, there is unemployment, then you just have to take it to our terms. So when we are looking, uh, exploitation is one of the major disadvantages of agri-revolution. That has been overcome by European countries and Americans because they tend to dictate what you have to pay when even when you come and invest in their country, agriculture inclusive. But that we have not gotten in Nigeria. So we tend to see capital flight from investors in agriculture and we also see exploitation of workers. So those are major uh, disadvantages that government also should look into in as much as we're inviting foreign investment, we are inviting local investment, we must also look at the issue of capital flight and also exploitation. Okay, we're going to come to um, how government can do that. Quickly, we'll go on a break and return agri economic continues. Stay tuned.
especially as regards our own Nigerian economy. Um, I've been talking to Mr. Gabriel Dakolo, who has been taking us around uh, the, the, um, the uh, you know, the need for African revolution, the benefits, and uh, and now we shall be taking a look at. Um, we've talked about the um, um, advantages and disadvantages of yeah. revolution. Before we go on the break, you talked about um, uh, extortion as to be one major amongst um, the disadvantages to the revolution. Yeah. That the part that um, um, calls my attention more is um, extortion. How can the government look at because of course we can't say that investors shouldn't come it is when investors come that this sector will thrive yes definitely so um how, how can government look at it if you look at the petroleum sector you see that if we have the D dpa where they go around to check yes. if the petroleum uh, company or a first station is are selling as and when do you and yes. at the uh, stipulated price yes. can we have something similar when uh, actually, the, the Nigerian government needs to do more than what it's saying now. In any, uh, any investor, whether local or foreign, will first look out for his own benefits, not minding whose horse is God. It's normal. So when you see advanced countries, they have government intermediaries in as much as they do not want to interfere in the, balance, in the trading or agreements that is between the workers and the, uh, and, the, and the companies. But they ensure that they have a comprehensive trade rule that every business that is in, the, in that uh, community or locality must go through. Look at how, for example, when you are looking at oil and gas, look at how communities suffered seriously over the years in Oloibiri, in our farm, in all those places that were oil spillages due to lack of concrete agreement by the government and these investors. What the government wanted then, or what they were doing then, was just come in, come and invest, give us our royalties, then the rest is left to you. And when an investor sees that you do not care about the other aspects of their business, you are only uh, uh, concerned about what comes to you as a government, they take advantage. And that is why when government is signing agreement with investors, or both local and foreign, as regards agriculture, the community and the employee must be taken into cognizance in the schedule of agreements that are being signed. When I say schedule of agreement, every investor wants to sign any agreement or agreements that will benefit them. But the government also must not only look out for what comes to the government's boss, but must look out for what benefits the locality, the community where the, 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 the company or the business is cited, and also the employees. Yes, we know that there is what they call local content. When uh, an, a, a company comes into a locality, uh, even if, if it's a, an agriculture business company, they must also source first for uh, employees from that community, they must be given priority before they bring other employees from other areas or other states. But be that as it may, the community must be first taken care of in the area and issues of CSR, that is corporate social responsibility. The employees and engineers of those communities must be given a priority uh, uh, and pride of place for working in that uh, environment, for example. And thirdly, every employee that is a citizen of that country, that is a citizen of Nigeria, should be protected in agreements that will be signed before the company commences. You will see that over time, most of these issues now crop up because there is no agreement that was signed with the government. And the companies tell you that, look, we don't have any agreement with you. We only have with the government. We are fulfilling our... Uh, part of our obligations to the government so you take whatever it is that we give you so this needs to be looked into ab initio before operations begin the issue of welfare of the community the issue of employees of those organizations has to be looked into okay don't you think um a uh, part of these things we have because i know that um i've lived in a community where uh, we used to have um, uh, not in the agri agrarian area now in industrialization where yes. there is rock blasting. Yes. 
and then when we complain that ah the road is bad blah 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 you know you go to the community that you push you, you're blasting rocks why not just pour some of these on the road and, make the road and then, they'll, then, then they'll tell you that they, they do not owe you that obligation. They didn't, it's, it's not their job to do it is when they feel like they should do it blah 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 you know with so much coming up uh, as, as regards excuses do we um is, can we not have before the court of law really if we're going to really have a revolution to say that you are signing this for this um, uh, uh, um, time or for rainy season for example there's going to be uh, of course uh, a rainfall that's going to help these plants grow yeah. but you should uh, provide bubbles blah, and then these things I mean it should be put on ground yes. on the ground before take off of any of these um, you know, investors yeah. and then um, an agreement of maybe after some time, after this month you do this, after that, because if you look at it, um, uh, uh, sincerity of purpose comes to play Yes. in most cases as regards um, CSRs. What do you think um, more stringent, because if you look at it, uh, yes CSR being done, but very few companies still uh, let, let, let's look at it this way. You see that just like I mentioned, Afam, Oloibi, and all those uh, oil-producing yes. areas yes. that uh, the, there were all spillages that affected their vegetation, affected the health of their people. They took those companies to court. But you know how it is in Nigeria where you go to court. Before they could get judgment, it took years. Uh, in the in the instance of this Oloibri and Afra that we are talking about, it took close to 25 to 30 years. In fact, some of those uh, people that were directly affected initially would have died in the process. So, one thing that I want you to also know is that we also have what we call industrial courts. Industrial court is supposed to be a court that uh, when there is labor dispute between an organization and its workers, it's supposed to step in and... Uh, and uh, a rule on the dispute as fast as possible. There are impediments to this. The first impediment is a commitment of government when it comes to tripartite agreement between the government, the investor, and the community or the workers. That needs to be fine-tuned because we operate in a rule of law. Nigeria is not a banana republic. If you do not have an agreement ab initio, you cannot enforce one when a, a situation has happened. So that hinders how ruling used to take place and it also uh, uh, what makes it take longer for justice to be uh, achieved. The second aspect of it is you cannot rule out the issue of funds, money. So you can imagine the enormous funds that at, at their disposal which they used to stall the case for a very long time before judgment came. In fact, at a point they were even uh, trying to get the case international to other courts around the world just to be able to, to delay. So when you you are you as a community, for example, is trying or a, a group of workers is trying to sue your employer or as regards a community and they, you do not have the financial muscle that they have, they can use it as an advantage against you. So when we are talking of workers that are being paid and they do not have resources to that extent, it can affect the course of judgment. That is why government needs to also come in. In, in uh, industrialized countries, in uh, countries that have seen these cases, there is what we call those uh, advocates that will come together or, uh, or, or, or uh, NGOs or CSOs that will come together to look into such situations whereby they know that the, the employees that have grievances do not even have the resources for legal uh, adjudication or to legal representation, for example. They come to the IA to get very good lawyers for them to be able to push their case. In some cases, the government also help in those situations. So when we look at the time it takes for you to get judgment and also the financial uh, capacity it involves, that those are some of the reasons why some of these cases, some don't even get judgment at the end of the day. Or some, the matters will die down. They will say, okay, we are settling out of court and they will give them peanuts at the end of the day. So government needs to look at these issues to ensure that there are concrete agreements signed up in issue. 
before this uh, organization uh, starts. Okay, thank you so much for um, bringing, um, giving us clarification as regards this. Uh, you've heard it, uh, revo uh, agricultural revolution is nothing but if only governments can put in measures in ensuring that it works smoothly. On that note, to we'll wrap it up on the program for this week, join us again, same time, same station next week. I remain Kajijo, we want to have a team. Bye for now.